Hello, and thank you for coming to Attitudes and Social Distance Effects. My name is Shelby Wilcox, and I'm excited to present this on behalf of my co-authors, Richard Husky and Dave D'Andrea. Please feel free to tweet anything you see in this presentation. In addition, this was pre-registered on OSF, and you can find all the materials and data on the OSF via a link I'll provide at the very end. When we think about our environment, we're constantly inundated with information and messages but we don't have the resources to be able to process all of the messages that we're exposed to. And so Capella and colleagues argue that the prominent information in our environment is a function of how people engage with those messages and how they decide to share or retransmit those messages. And while we know a lot about exposure and retransmission, we don't necessarily know as much about these metrics of engagement and what happens after exposure. And so this study then is looking at metrics of engagement. And this is especially important in health contexts like e-cigarette use because this is a rising problem for American teens and youth. And so looking from an elaboration likelihood model to better understand message processing and engagement, we know that an individual's motivation to process and ability to process messages can affect how messages are elaborated on and perceived, specifically different factors such as attitudes and also message sources. So when people have strong attitudes about message content, these strong attitudes make the information more relevant and these attitudes are less likely to change over time and also are more likely to impact future behavior and choices. So when people are then presented pro or counter attitudinal content related to these strong attitudes, this can shape their motivation to process messages. Especially when they're presented counter attitudinal messages, these result in unfavorable thoughts or message resistance and defensive processing like counter-arguing. And as a result of this counter-arguing, people spend more time elaborating on these messages. And elaborating was previously measured as time spent on a page. And elaboration has also been measured as things like thought listing um, and counter-arguments. So we hypothesize here that people will spend more time processing information from counter attitudinal messages in line with those previous findings. And there's also a lot of research showing that a higher elaboration is, like, is highly correlated to memory of that information. So we should see that recall, but people recall more information from counter attitudinal messages compared to pro attitudinal messages. But message sources have also been effect, shown to affect how people elaborate and perceive and process these messages and then how persuasive these messages are. And so, when you increase things like likability or change similarity and credibility, these often have the same effects. And as a result of these similar effects across multiple studies, it's made us think that maybe there's an underlying factor that's contributing to these results. And so here we're interested in looking at one possible underlying factor of social distance, which is a subjective perception or experience of difference from the self to others. And this comes from the control level of theory perception that we evaluate the term the world in terms of what we know, basically starting at an egocentric point. So we evaluate distance from ourselves, and the further away from ourselves an object or a person is perceived, the greater psychological distance we then think about it. So the more somebody is removed from us, that should mean the less motivationally relevant and the greater social distance from us as well. And so this higher personal relevancy should also be then related to an increased motivation to engage with messages and greater message processing. And these assumptions are supported in previous work, such as that we select and engage with messages from sources we evaluate to be most like us. And so therefore, individuals should spend more time processing messages from socially close message senders compared to socially distanced, and again, recall more information then from those socially close message senders compared to the socially distant senders to consider the interaction effects between attitudes and social distance and such that we have seen, previously seen that conflicting information, which is basically like high, higher credibility, but sharing counter attitudinal messages, this increases processing motivation. But at the same time, counter attitudinally message from socially distant sources, or there's less motivationally relevant sources, increases di discounting and has decreased reactance, so people aren't as motivated to engage with those messages. So we predict that processing time will be longest for counter attitudinal messages from socially close senders and shortest for pro attitudinal messages from socially close senders, and we should see the same effects for recall.
And just to kind of visualize that, here's what we expect the interaction to look like, right? The greatest difference should be between those close senders and then that distance between processing time and recall decreases as social distance increases. In order then to look at this, to test our hypothesis, we first had to create and test the message stimuli. So we recruited participants from MTurk and we randomly selected five pro eSig messages and five anti eSig messages to be evaluated on their perceived argument strength. And then also had the same participants randomly evaluate five socially close and five socially distant sources out of about 40 different um, messages and 40 different sources. And so here then, after we selected messages that were matched on, the sources were matched on credibility and likability and messages were matched on their perceived argument strength, we then created the final stimuli, which looks, which looks similar to this. And so the difference between the distant sources and the close sources are whether or not they depict stimuli and cues related to Ohio State, which is the population used in the main study. So in the example above, you can see that there's random leafs and pictures of a space not related to Columbus or Ohio State University, and that it's also mentioning another city. But on the bottom, there's a lot of different cues, such as the Ohio State Stadium. There is Ohio mentioned in the Twitter handle, and also the leaf of Ohio State used as a background. And then it's presented next to the either pro eSig message and anti eSig message. And then from there, we recruited undergraduates from Ohio State University via SONA pool. They completed the study online. We then showed participants either those pro eSig messages or anti eSig messages, so pro versus counter attitudinal messages, and we varied whether it was a close or distant sender, and we showed that multiple, multiple messages varied on those dimensions. In addition, we then collected DBs of processing time, a covariate for baseline response time to non-health messages, and then A prime and B prime for our behavioral recall messages. I'm not going to dive into that, but I will talk about those a little bit later. And if you're interested, please ask more questions. So for the processing time, we recorded all of this on Qualtrics, and it was the time on page collected in milliseconds from when the page loaded to when the participants pressed the spacebar to move on from the message. And before each message, participants were reminded to please read the tweet completely and press the, the space bar to move on. For the signal detection task, participants viewed 32 10 word segment clips, and 16 of these messages or clips were from the actual study, and these were the targets. And then they were shown 16 messages that were kind of fakes, and otherwise known as foils. And so participants had eight seconds to read and then respond to these clips. The procedure was that participants first viewed these non-health messages to get a baseline response time. And then from there, they viewed one health message at a time. And after they viewed the message, they completed counter argument scale. And that was our manipulation check, basically that, our, our manipulation check for the counter arguments. From there, they then complete, after viewing all the health messages, they did the signal detection task, and then they, after doing that, they reported their perceived social distance from all the sources. Finally, they reported their, their e-cig habits. And so e-cigarette users were those who had previously used e-cigarettes in the past 30 days. And just to remind you before going into the results, these are the predicted results that we expected for both the processing time and the recall. Before going into the results, an interesting finding was that our that was that our manipulation checks of the social distance did work. In addition, the counter arguing was greatest for counter attitudinal messages compared to pro attitudinal messages from socially close senders compared to socially distant. So our counter arguing measure does look pretty similar to this predicted interaction. But when we look at our processing times, we see something a little bit different. You can see that there isn't really much difference in how pro and counter attitudinal messages were evaluated when it's from a socially close sender, but as that becomes more socially distant, there is a significant difference. So attitudes did have an effect on our processing time. However, we did, there wasn't 
people spend more time processing pro-attitudinal messages compared to counter-attitudinal messages. So our hypothesis one was not supported. In addition, we did not find that distance affected processing time. So our hypothesis three was not supported. But we did find a significant interaction. It just wasn't in the direction that we predicted. So instead of the greatest difference being for socially close senders, we found that the greatest difference was actually for socially distant senders. And if we look at measures of A prime, we can see that on the left, there's a measure of sensitivity. So the greater the sensitivity, the better people were at discriminating these target or old, the previously seen information compared to these new or fake information. Participants were better at remembering information from socially close senders compared to socially distant senders. But that attitudes did not affect these A prime measures and there was not a significant interaction. Lastly, we see something similar for the B double prime or criterion bias and that people were more liberal in saying, yes, there's a, I remember seeing this information for the old information compared to the fake information. And so again, right, attitudes did not affect B prime, but distance did, and there wasn't a significant interaction here. So what then do all these results mean? Well, broadly what we see is that attitudes weakly affect processing time from close source, but attitudes strongly affect processing time from a distant source. So attitudes become more motivationally relevant when the source becomes less motivationally relevant during message processing. And these results are pretty different than a lot of the previous findings. And so some of the reasons we think that may have occurred was that the participants' attitudes towards e-cigs or e-cigarettes were not particularly salient or primed. And we also include e-cigarette users and non-e-cigarette users compared to studies that have previously mostly just used e-cigarette users or, or smokers. In addition, the messages were non-threatening. So maybe the counter-arguing responses weren't as great as previous studies that were threatening. And when we look at the memories, here we found that participants remembered information more when it was from a socially close source compared to a socially distance. So they were better at discriminating between new information and old information. And there was a lower threshold for recalling old information when that information was from a socially close sender. And these findings have important theoretical implications because counter-arguing processing times appear to be different indicators of motivation. Right? For counter-arguing, counter -arguing, we did see more similar effects that were in line with previous findings, that counter-arguing was higher for counter-attitudinal information, but that that didn't mean that processing time was also greater for when there was more counter-arguing. So it seems that there's some sort of difference going on that's driving the effects between why people counter-argue more but why they're not spending more time on that page, possibly reading the message. In addition, the social closeness of source seems to bias our message processing from source characteristics. That attitudes are more motivationally relevant in the absence of social distance cues. And this has practical implications because if we want people to remember the information, it may want that health information should be perceived as coming from a more similar source, so a target audience. Basically what this shows is in line with previous, in previous findings that we place more importance on socially close others, but we discount the important, we discount information that are, is from socially distant sources. And that the social closeness again biases how we process these messages from source characteristics. And so previously we thought that maybe that social cues might not have been as important, but what we're actually seeing is that social cues may play an even more important role for how we engage with messages than other factors such as attitudes. And so this is just kind of a first glimpse into this, into metrics of engagement, but we really need more investigation about what engagement to better help us understand what information is more likely to spread and hopefully then what information is more likely and what messages are more likely to affect behavior and, help positive, and encourage positive health behaviors. Thank you so much for your time. I'm really looking forward to all the questions. Please feel free to check out more on our OSF page.